Hey everybody, this is Matt. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Gibson EBO Resto Mod. Today, we are going to be pulling frets from the fretboard. The reason we're going to pull frets from the fretboard is I didn't make it to the uh, lumberyard to get mahogany veneers for, um, for the top and back of the body. But this still needs to be done and um, I got a few minutes before people start showing up today uh, to work on their stuff and uh, let's get started. As you know, we are going to be refinishing this guitar, so it would really look tacky to have dicked up frets and, uh, you know, and you could probably clean some of this up, but you know what, since we're doing it, these are the, um, uh, the super, super flat 60s style Gibson frets. As you can see there, there's not a lot of meat to redress. You could probably get away with it. Um, but you know what, we got that uh, Stumac cryo wire, so I thought we would just put some of that in here. But we have to yank these guys out and clean up the fretboard. Uh, today, all we're really gonna do is just yank the frets out and, um, cause it might take a little while cause we wanna do it right. All right, here is my bench set up for what we are going to, uh, to do today. Um, obviously the neck and this is just, it's just in a, a little padded rest here and it probably will stay in there for most of the time but probably come out as I start calling it names and cursing it. Um, I've got these uh, fret pulling pliers uh, from Stumac. Uh, they work pretty well. You could, you don't need to use these, but these work pretty, pretty dang good. And then I've got um, uh, 80 watt soldering iron that I'm going to use to heat the frets prior to pulling them out. And hopefully that will save as much of the rosewood on the fretboard as we possibly can without having a bunch of chunks and chips and stuff. So, um, Let's do it. All right, let's make sure my soldering iron is hot enough here. And it appears to be, it is melting solder. Like I said, this is a pretty heavy, heavy duty soldering iron. So I have filed a groove in this, uh, in this soldering iron. Um, and I, I got this tip from another guy on YouTube. I don't remember who it was, but the idea is that it will, um, it will stay on the fret better and just kind of, um, you know, help everything work work out. And uh, all we want to do is just kind of heat this guy up. And we don't want to burn anything. But man, there's a bunch of gype on the, uh, on the fretboard that certainly will, will burn. And then you just kind of get the, let me see if I can get this in the camera here. You just want to get the, get the fret pulling guys just under the fret and you don't want to yank it out of there you want to like go go across and uh, everything should come out just about right that looks pretty dang good y'all um, so there's our fret wire so now all we have to do is we have to just do that 19 more times one thing that we probably will need to be aware of is the um, the inlays are probably uh, flammable, <laughs> so so we're going to uh, we, if we don't have to replace the inlays, let's not. So just be uh, be aware that we don't want to get the soldering iron like you know right on there because that would suck. So again, you just want to kind of wiggle these things under the frets, um, and you don't want to get it under there and then yank it out. You just want to, and sometimes. They play nice, and sometimes they don't. This guy looks like number 19 was pressed in a little better than number 20 was. Or maybe we need a little more heat. Um, I don't know if Gibson used glue on uh, on all these frets, but maybe they did. Um, if you are doing this to a uh, um, another guitar that definitely has uh, glue, the, then the soldering iron is absolutely critical. There we go, come on baby. You know you want to. Remember that part where I said I was gonna start cursing at it? And just, if I can just get it under. Jeez Louise. Man, it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger pressed this fret in. There we go, all right, now. So now I got, once you get it started, then it's easy to kind of get these dudes out of the board. Good gravy. All right, 
There's some chips that came out on this one. It's okay. I mean, remember, we're putting new frets in, and we're going to grind this, uh, this fretboard back. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal to have a, a few chunks and chips. Um, but uh, we want the, the fewer of those we can get, the better off we will be. Um, now, something that uh, comes up every so often in conversation is that Fender used to pull frets through the fret slot rather than, uh oh, see, I burned it. Um, they used to pull the, uh, the frets through the fret slot rather than press them in through the top. And uh, so what I'm doing here is not advisable. It is ill-advised for, um, for a vintage um, Fender fretboard. Okay, so that we, uh, man, that, that actually came out really clean, but we burned the, uh, burned the fretboard just a tick. And you know, again, this isn't going to matter because we're going to sand this all back and we're probably going to stain or at least oil the, uh, the board again. And uh, there we go. And the soldering iron's getting nice and hot. And you can smell the rosewood, which is nice. It is beautiful. Come on, baby. Come on now. This is like every other one somebody mashed in with a... Okay. Son of bitch! Shit! This is gonna be a long video and it's just me gonna be doing this this stuff. I wonder if I should speed it up. I kind of want to give you guys a break from high speed video um, and music because I do so many of those. Um, Mrs. Texas Toast just came in and asked if I was alone. Like, who am I going to be talking to? Besides you guys. Anyway. There we go. Come on now. All right. Man, fret jobs are really, really fun, especially when you're out of practice like I am. Actually, this isn't this isn't too bad. Come on now. Boy, lots of lots of chunk on that one. We might we might actually put the um, put the little Teflon dam in here and and float super glue over these um, these uh, chunks of fretboard so we can kind of salvage as much of it as we possibly can. Um, rather than just flick them out and, and say, that's good enough. Sometimes you don't even have to use the Teflon dim. You can just kind of flow super glue in there and recut the, recut the slot. But that one was really a bitch. Maybe it didn't have enough heat going to it. This one wants to bust. So sometimes if you get a really stubborn one, this is kind of an old school thing, you can get a couple of chisels, the cheap ones, the cheapest chisels you can find, and you can kind of get under the fret that way. Um, these Stumac pliers are really cool because they, they will grab the fret, but they're not as undercut as uh, as a chisel. So, if you don't have the Stumac pliers or another brand, um, like I say, this chisel trick actually works pretty well, especially if you can get you know two of them in there. Um, so that's a little tip from your old buddy Matt. But to remember to use the use the junkiest crappiest chisels you can find to do that because it will mar them and you don't do that to your nice chisels right Let's see if we can do that trick again here let's get under it because getting under it is the tricky bit and then the pliers are really good to just kind of ease it out yeah actually I like that I like that a lot Hell, I like it so much I might do it on all the rest. 
guy's really in there. See all the chips coming out of this one? That one was rough. And I set my bench on fire. <laughs> All right, guys, last one. I think Chris just pulled up. More to the point, I think he just pulled up in his uh, Buick Deuce and a Quarter, which means I get to cruise around in a Deuce, a Deuce and a Quarter later on, around lunchtime, which is always cool. It's sort of like driving down the street on a couch. All right, so we're almost done, and this fretboard's looking pretty good. Um, there was a lot of crud on the uh, on the fretboard and a bunch of uh, I, I know there's some adhesive on here on some of these frets and I wonder if maybe this wasn't uh, part of a partial fret job that got done to this this guy at some point in the last however many years any second now Chris is gonna walk in well it's a good thing I didn't cut the crap out of myself just then edge up now we can chase it with the these little pliers and we will be done ready to wrap up this video uh, come on you son bitch there you go all right let's go ahead and call that a video um the couple of things that I want to point out though one is don't go poking at these little chips and flicking them out. Blow off all the ones that aren't in place, but before you go messing with it and taking chunks out that you can't put back, flow some super glue in here. You're gonna sand it back anyway and re-level this board. So now's the time to do that before any of that shit goes away and you can't get it back and you have to backfill it with pooty because no one wants pooty on the neck. Um, so, Let's see, if you guys have any questions about what we did in this video or any of the tools that we use, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, give us the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you hit the subscribe button now? Uh, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you cool stuff like this. And we just got a couple new Patreon members, so thank you everybody for supporting us on Patreon. We are entirely viewer supported and that's the way we aim to keep it. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I